Chase, you look good today. I do? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm freezing. Hey, you're probably, you don't Make look sure freezing. Make sure you know the story. I'm not accustomed to it. Yeah. Uh, Servideo, doing a little bit of everything. A little outfield, a little infield. How's, uh... Yeah. Um, yes. I yeah, mean, I mean... I, yes, he is, and you'll see him if you watch the inner squad games. He'll play some short, some second. Maybe some third, a uh, little outfield. We really haven't had him out there in the skill work, but he's uh, as far as defense and fundamentals. But he's been out there uh, during his second defensive group in, in, uh, in batting practice, so uh, it makes it look pretty easy out there. Elko said it hasn't really been much of a transition for him in the outfield. Has he looked pretty natural over the course of the He time? has, and uh, he's looked terrific along with Cockrell. We just mentioned Sir Video. Um, Infielders a lot of times, you know, pick it up pretty quickly. You know, you know Ryan Olenek did it, Kyle Watson's done it, you know, guys that really never played out there, we threw them out there. You know, good athletes usually can, can figure it out pretty quickly. You, you mentioned that uh, it's never a bad thing to have too many hitters, but when you're weighing how to construct a lineup, do you, is it just matchups that you value defense maybe more and then maybe more offense here? I mean, how do you manage that with I think it's too early to, you know, think yeah. about that matchups and those types of things. You know, one is you try to figure out, you know, who your best nine is, and right now that's really hard. You're, you're right. And, you know, I, I don't remember a year that, you know, I've been part of three national championships, and I don't remember a year where you said, wait, we just had too many players. We were just too good. Uh, you just, you figure, you figure away. Last year, we, we played really well offensively. We were able to, you know, move, you know, some guys around, and, you know, uh, and I think, you know, keep everybody happy but I think boy, when you're having success it's it's a lot easier you know and usually if you, everybody's playing well you're having success and people are just willing to contribute in any way that they can so you know I think it's it's you know, I don't think we should worry about you know who's going to start right field or who's going to start at you know, third base I think we should just continue to try to get better as a team and I know that kind of sounds like coaches speak but it's the truth you know and at the end of the day it'll, it'll all you know uh, find its way to you know, you know fit. How are you dividing up Thomas's reps defensively, outfield, catcher, just in these inner squads and stuff? How are you kind of well, you know, to start off, he's, he'll have you know more. You know, in the in the, uh, in the fall, he, he caught a lot, uh, but still wanted to get him in the outfield a little bit. Uh, but now with uh, you know Knox just you know coming off you know the foot injury, uh, not able to catch yet. You know, certainly he, there, there's there's more uh, warnings back there for, for Thomas. I know it's early, but you were talking about depth. How many guys realistically are in the rotation right now, or are getting looks for potentially having a lot of those at bats? For the at bats? Yeah. You would think all 18 or <laughs> whatever <laughs> there are. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know. I don't count it like that. I'm not. I'm not really sure because I think you know, it depends kind of into what uh, I just answered. I yeah. think you know, um, you know, as we get closer to the season, I think it'll be more specific of, of where. Oh, this guy's going to start here. This guy's going to start here. Uh, and what we're left, where can we get them at bats? You know, sometimes you know the defense part of that is you know where you know try to fit guys in just to get some at bats. I've said it before, where early in the season, uh, sometimes platoon and sometimes you know batting left-handers against right-handed starting pitchers and vice versa. And it's really not because that's a certain belief. It's really because you're trying to get guys off to good starts. You're trying to get guys to have success, you know, right off the bat, um, and then. You know, through the first three or four weeks, you know, uh, we got to figure it out. And the same on the pitching side. So we're, you know, by the time we get to Alabama, we have the best team that we can out there. Any innings and pitch count wise, how do you sort of stretch the guys over three weeks, uh, starting today, I guess, and getting to opening day? Right. We'll we'll go. The the easy answer is they'll go two innings today, three innings next weekend, four innings the following weekend. But really, for the guys that I think have an opportunity to start, you know, we're trying to get them somewhere between 30 and 40 pitches today, and probably about 20 pitches every week after that. You know, so uh, you know, if, if Etheridge you know blows through it today, or Roth blows through it today, and they hit their two innings, they only throw like 15 pitches. We'll probably run them out there another inning. Um, you know, and, and sometimes it just depends. You know, sometimes they, they may be a little low on their pitches, uh, but because of weather, because of 
the, the strain of those pitches when I say that, you know, meaning, you know, there's some pressure on them to get out, you know, we may we may cut it at that. But, you know, that's really the, you know, the, the hope is, you know, the, the guys that have an opportunity to start somewhere between 30 and 40 pitches. You want to get by the time we open up on the 15th, you hope the three guys that start Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, can throw 80 plus pitches, you know, somewhere between 80 and 100 pitches. You know, that way, you know, that starts somebody that you don't think can get through five innings. You want to early. Go ahead, Mark. In one of these early inner squad games, what is one of the biggest things you want to see from the team overall when, when you're moving this uh, You know, um, it's a great question. This is a veteran team, and you know, certainly we want, we want to pitch clean on the mound. And when I say that, throw the ball in the strike zone, stay ahead of hitters, you know, get this, you know, this, you know, this good offense, be able to, 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 to manage your two innings or three innings uh, uh, and get through it. Um, but you know, on the other side, to play as cleanly as we can, you know, to stay focused. To you know, sometimes you know, the, the the benefit to having you know, a veteran club is that they they know a lot of the things that we already do and are part of the system. It's not like we reinvent stuff, you know, in year three for Kessinger. You know, he knows the bunt defenses, and you know, guys like Tyler Keenan and Servidio and Adams have been in the infield Zebo in their third year. They know the pickoffs and a lot of the stuff that we do, but they don't they don't make uh, you know dumb plays. They don't they they. they they're, they're focused, and you know, uh, every week that we go out there, you know, we look collectively better as a team. You mentioned earlier this week that Elko had one of the better offensive falls of anybody. He said it was just because he quit pressing. Did you see that, or was there anything in particular that you saw that allowed him to be really good? No, I, I, you know, I think you know what happened to Tim happens to a lot of freshmen. You know, where you know coming in, I think if you would have asked us last year, and maybe you did, you know, at the beginning of the fall, uh, or probably you guys know because you do your research that he was probably one of the most talented freshmen in that class, and just didn't have a good year. I mean, and uh, you know. If you've been here for a few years, you've seen a few really good freshmen do that. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I knew the reason for that uh, uh, or a way to stop that, but sometimes they have to have those growing pains. So I think it's more of that. I think Tim's more comfortable now. I think he's more relaxed. I think it's not any super adjustment that he's made. Uh, probably more mentally, you know, and, and feeling more comfortable being here uh, because, you know, he is an outstanding player. A lot was made of Keenan's hitting last year, and rightfully so. It seemed like his defense kind of flew under the radar. Have you seen him continue to progress there? Because it's not always an easy position to play. Yeah. Well, um, is it, it is an easy No, no, it's not. It's not <laughs> easy. Wow. I, no, I think you're right. And, uh, you're, you know, and I think when you look at Tyler, uh, and people always talk about the offense. We, we always you know, uh, realize that, you know, offense is a focus. It's the sexier thing. It's the thing that most people, you ask most people in the stands, they don't even really know what a good fielding percentage is, but everybody knows what a good batting average is. Um, and so, and I think that's always the thing uh, that seems to, to, to go unnoticed. Um, you know, unless you're at one of those premium defensive positions, shortstop, center field, catcher. Uh, but, but Tyler had an outstanding defense a year. And we pushed him a little bit to try to move around, play a little deeper, give himself a little more range. Uh, he's got a very accurate arm. He's very good uh, on the slow roller. Um, uh, he, he's got great hands. He's able to, to maneuver you know, back and forth, left to right. So he's, he's got you know, good range. And so uh, we're, we're excited you know, for him again this year.